are you? Welcome back to my channel. I know that you have been expecting this video and it's here and I'm very excited. Meet my great friend who is a professional life coach, which is pretty cool. Yeah. You wanna introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi everybody, my name is Nicole Severson and I am a trauma-informed empowerment coach. I work mostly with women and I help women to bust through their emotional blocks, heal their emotional and physical gut so that they can create the success and the business and the life that they dream of. So yeah. like just briefly, let us know real quick what a life coach is. Basically, like a therapist, but it's results based. So you have somebody that's gonna be holding you accountable to whatever goals or desires that you're going after. Your life coach is gonna be there to help you be like, hey, this might be an area where you get stuck or they can see your blind spots yeah. and help hold you accountable to achieve the things. Well, cool. So I asked you guys on Instagram and on YouTube to just submit whatever questions and there were so many good ones. I love all of your questions. There's so They're many so good ones. Good. <laughs> yeah, I and love the them. cool thing is there was a lot of like repeated questions from different people yeah so I kind of combined all the questions that were asked a lot of different times we're just gonna go through these let's do it this is one that I got in a lot of different contexts and people were like how do I make friends I'm an adult besides just co-workers how do I make friends this is a great question because as you age it continues to get harder we're all guilty of getting like our close friends and wherever we live and we don't really venture out of that place yeah so my recommendation would be to do new things okay. so whether it's on your own or with your partner Putting yourself where there's a new job or you're going to, you know, you're going to be a part of a soccer league or you're doing something where you're out meeting new people. Whether that's through like a hiking group or mm -hmm. um, you want to start taking salsa lessons or something. Yeah. Also, is there something to like, I do all those activities all the time, but I'm yeah. always nervous to be like, hey, let's exchange Instagrams, let's hang out. Yeah. I think it's getting past that too, no? Yeah, absolutely. And a big piece of that is finding something where it's repetitive, whether it's like a church or something where you're gonna see these people more than once. Cause it is harder when you're just like, hey, I think you're really cool and we should hang out, which you can totally say. Right. And it's like letting yourself be vulnerable in that way. It's having that intention. You have to follow up with people and like keep trying and don't take it personally if somebody's busy. This is a big one. I really liked this one because it's more specific and we're gonna talk more about purpose and careers and stuff like that later, but should your career have purpose or can you find purpose in other aspects of life? I remember reading this last night. I was like, ah, oh, these questions. They're so good. <laughs> They're, They're so, so good. good. This is really, yes, you should have purpose in your life in general. It doesn't have to come from your work. Okay. So if you have a nine to five job career that you're okay with and you are like, hey, it pays my bills and my 401k, you have that safety and comfort and it's not a job that you like hate going to mm -hmm. and you have really amazing hobbies and different things outside of your career, yeah. um, I would say that's okay and I think it really depends on the person. But if you're like hating going into that job and you're not, it's a soul sucking thing, that's where I would say there needs to be a shift. So this is a good one about relationships. A lot of my channel, a lot of y'all are engaged or married, so, or in a very serious relationship considering engagement. Yeah. So um, how to strengthen and grow your relationship with your significant other after years of being together, because that's what marriage is. Totally. Yeah. When I was reading this, I broke down into two pieces. So A, this has to be for yourself mm -hmm. and your relationship. So if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling like you're in a rut in your life, whether it's in your job or your body or whatever, mm -hmm. is to again, start doing new things. So yeah. allow yourself to go to karaoke with your friends or do something so you're not in a rut. Uh -huh. And then also in your relationship, be able to go do new things together. So you wanna have the time away from each other. When you first start dating somebody, they're always oh my like God, <laughs> who are they? What do they do? And everything's so exciting because they have their own life and that's like not living together every single day and you, right. you know, you're not in their routine yet. Yeah. So the more that you can really allow yourself to not to separate, but to be able to like have your own things that are really inspiring and passionate for you. Yeah. And that reignites the relationship. I love that. Yeah. So being intentional about breaking routine. Yeah. Like, so I have a lot of subscribers too who are like just starting college and kind of that whole scary chase of life. So someone asked, how do I discover my dream job or like my correct career path? Most of us come from small towns or whatever and then we move away to some other place for college and then decide in there somewhere. 
things that you start to notice that you really like to do. So my recommendation for this would be to really dive into yourself and tap into like, what do I actually really enjoy doing? There's a difference between strengths, which are things that we just are naturally good at. And then there's passions. And those are the things that we're gonna do even if we suck at them, right? Because yeah. we like love doing it so much. For this, I know it's a journey and it's a discovery process. And I know that's probably not what most people wanna hear because it's like, you want that like, easy answer. this is how you decide. And <laughs> um, the more, my recommendation would be the more that you can really go inside and really pay attention to what is it that I want, like love to do. And it's a discovery process. You yeah. don't need to decide at 18 what we're gonna do for the rest of our lives, which is like kind freeing. of a relief and freeing yeah. because thank God. <laughs> Knowing that it's temporary, even if you do it for 20 years, it's gonna be a temporary thing. So it doesn't have to be the nine to five job. It yeah. doesn't have to be this like career path that most people think of when they think yeah. of like deciding. So take the pressure off of yourself and just allow yourself to really tap into where you have pleasure and desire and that will guide you and you'll discover it over time. I just wanted to take a quick break in this amazing talk. Stay tuned because there is a lot of really good information coming up, but I wanted to show you real quick a bag that I was gifted by Teddy Blake. You know your bag is nice when your bag comes in a bag. I have never owned a bag this nice in my life. I'm not kidding when I say that. This is the bag I chose. This bag is called the Alice Bag and Camel. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. So Teddy Blake is an incredible brand. All of their bags are made in Italy from actual Italian leather so this is a real leather bag and they've been making them since 1958 so they are a very quality well-known brand i picked this one because it's somewhere between a purse and a computer bag my laptop fits in here it comes with a super cute little wristlet on the inside so that you can keep your lip gloss and your keys and then all of your big work stuff in the main body of the bag. And they have a sale on their website right now where everything is 30% off. So you can snag some really good quality bags for significantly less money right now, which is awesome. Thank you, Teddy Blake, so much for sending me this. I adore it and I'm going to take it every time I do work in a coffee shop, which is every day. Back to the video. Someone said, thoughts on hustle culture and how to get ahead in your career while maintaining a healthy mental and emotional balance. I've talked about this in a previous video. I feel like our culture really does glorify exhaustion. Yes, it does. How do you get ahead and stay healthy? How do you hustle and stay healthy? Yes, <laughs> that's, the, that's the key to life. <laughs> hustle culture is a real thing. There's a couple things I have to say about this. So yes, you can do it and long term maybe not sustainable for your health and things but knowing when to hustle and when to receive most of us have projects or things going on where it's like okay i know for this amount of time i'm gonna have to work more or yeah. do longer hours or whatever it is and then there's gonna be a time afterwards where you can kind of like recoup mm -hmm. so that would be like my first of being more aware of like okay how long do i actually need to hustle for Am I getting the results out of the hustle that I signed up for? So if you're just hustling all the time and you're not getting any results, that's a huge indicator that something needs to shift mm -hmm. because you will burn out. You will create fatigue and exhaustion. Brendan Bacard, he has interviewed tons and tons of people um, who are super successful and was like, take me through your day and see what the commonalities were. And the biggest thing was most successful people, every 50 minutes throughout their day, they'll take a break, a five to 10 minute break mm. to give their mind a break and to get up and move their body, take a sip of water, go for a walk. So this not only gives your brain a break, it gives your body a break and that'll recreate a little bit more resiliency. Um, I would encourage people to really check in with themselves and be like, what do I actually need to feel rejuvenated after a really long stressful day? I did bring for this question for like the health and wellness, you can take supplements that will help with yeah. Um, yeah. resilience. As most of us know and studies have shown that stress is like the number one killer in America. And it's because we have this whole hustle culture. This company is all about your gut health, your mental health, and the connection between the two. Mentibiotics for focus, de-stressing, and for your gut health. You are a hustler is finding ways to have that downtime and then also finding supplements that really support you. How do you motivate yourself to do something you don't wanna do? So people ask this within like work, people ask this within weight loss. You don't. <laughs> yeah. So my answer to this, you cannot motivate yourself to really to do something you don't wanna do. So 
in regards to this, you need to find your bigger why. So if it's weight loss, why do you want to lose weight? Because if you don't have this like, I want to get healthy because I'm pre-diabetic and I need to lose weight or if I don't lose weight, I might not be able to grow old with my kids. If you don't find that bigger why or inspiration, you're not going to have the motivation to change. And that's also where life coaches come in. Okay. So if you know that you don't have motivation or it's really hard for you, first check in, is it something you actually want to change? It's something you know you really want to do and you're getting stuck. Then I would say to find someone, a mentor or a coach or um, a running buddy buddy per se. Yeah. But accountability. accountability. How often do you recommend people take like a vacation or like a substantial break mm -hmm. away from just the day to day 10, 15 minutes? It depends on the person. So okay. some people it's like they could care less about vacations and that's Happy more working. Yeah. And yeah. they're more stressed out thinking about going on a vacation because of all the things. For some people they just want a weekend or a week to do nothing and to not be around people. And Netflix. Just, yeah. Just Netflix. Get caught up on Game of Thrones. <laughs> I just want Netflix. Netflix and chill, like in a literal sense. Or Netflix and yeah. chill, for us Mary ladies. <laughs> If you know your workaholic is like leaning into what is it about like taking a break that you're not wanting to look at, whether mm. it's not slowing down or not wanting to really address like emotional stuff coming up or whatever. That's but good. I do recommend it for switching things up for resting. Yeah. Resting. <laughs> and falling back in love with your career if you are in love. So we talk a lot about finance on this channel. We're very open about it. What are your thoughts on happiness versus money? If you're presented two jobs, this job pays $100,000 a year and you're not that passionate about it. This job pays $30,000 year but it sounds so fun realistically in terms of success what would you do I know in the first part it was like happiness versus money yeah and I want to like kibosh that because money is an external way of paying for goods and services happiness is your internal fulfillment in your life in being alive and being a human being our happiness is not based on money and we are taught that in our culture and I love this question because I love money like, when you have it, you're like, yes, this is awesome. You and when feel. you don't, you that's where that's where the connection of happiness and money come in is when you have it, everything's wonderful. And when you don't, you're stressed out and you're like just thinking about how you can make it. And yeah. so that's like a big piece that's really real for I think a lot of us. I know yeah. for myself, I go through those waves and I'm still working on that practice. This is a really great conversation. Most of us are not taught money stuff. Yeah, like it's so taboo, which is one thing all. that we're trying to break down here yeah, in this. I group. love it. This again is a really internal decision for someone. I would also recommend being able to, if you're going to take a job that's a passion job that's less money, educate yourself to where you can invest the money that you do make so later you're getting the return on that. It's a really personal decision, you know, if yeah. you're gonna do the high stress job for more money, which I have a ton of friends that do that, but they're like, you know what? I'm gonna do this for six years and like stock up my bank account and then I'm gonna go travel the world for a year or, you know, right. so it really just depends on the person in that way. And your priorities. And your priorities. We were just talking about this, Jen Sincero's book. Hers is really funny, really witty. She has a great sense of humor and kind of like a daily workbook thing that you can go through. Um, we got David Bach on the bottom, Start, Lace, Finish, Rich. is great for all of the purpose-driven, low-income yeah. <laughs> people. And this one's great for learning how to invest in different things. And this one is based off A Course in Miracles. So it's about being really spiritually aligned with making money. Yeah, we love books here. And I read the You Are a Badass, but not the money one. So now I want to read that. Yeah, so we'll good. link those below yeah. for you. Is contentment learned? And if so, how do I become more content where I am? Yes, contentment is learned. Depending on how you were raised, you're gonna feel content or normal homeostasis in different situations. So yeah. if you grew up in a really healthy, happy, normal childhood, your contentment filter or like the amount of contentment you can hold is gonna be different than someone that grew up in a household that was chaotic or somebody had an illness or addiction. Threshold. Yeah, it's a threshold and a, and a normal seat. So, and that also hand in hand goes into what you're able to receive. A number one way of this is gratitude. Allowing yourself to really list out and be grateful for things that you do have and that are working. And then also um, healing any spaces where you have a hard time receiving. Last but not least, I 
save this for last because I got a lot of people asking this question in different ways, but how to overcome the fear of failure or the fear of mm. rejection. This is my favorite. We save the best for last. Best for last, <laughs> always. I struggle with this. Every human, basically, unless you've done a ton of work on this and even then, still struggle with this. Yeah. My suggestion here would be, and we were just talking about this the other day, of to eat rejection for breakfast. <laughs> uh, you're gonna have rejection. You, you, there's no way to please everybody mm -hmm. and especially for big-hearted kind people like you kind of want that because you're like I try to see the best in everybody and yeah I'm a people pleaser. yeah eating rejection for breakfast is just not taking it personally so it's like all right they said no and seeing where the no's are actually opening doors for you in other areas it's so cliche but when one door closes another one opens exactly it's true it's Same true and reason. it's hard to like get that in the moment yeah because it's real time right <laughs> How to handle rejection is not to take it personally. Um, there's gonna be trolls, hate is gonna hate. Knowing that um, other people's perceptions are not you, and the more that you can get really strong in knowing yourself and surrounding yourself with people that believe in you and your truth, I always tell people to fail forward. So we're always gonna make mistakes. Mm -hmm. We're always gonna fail, but it's all learning experiences. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to remember that in the moment. See where your failures are actually helping guide and teach you to be better. I feel like there's so much good knowledge yeah. that just spewed out of you. So <laughs> thank you yeah. so much. If people wanna get into contact with you, I will link yeah. your information down below. Cool. They don't have to be local in this area, do they? No, not at all. I do all of my work with people online over cool. Skype and Zoom. Yeah. Thank you for coming yeah. and helping our community. Oh. <laughs> of course, it's such a pleasure and I can't wait to come back on and talk about more stuff. We will so. do a part two. Comment down yeah. below if you want to see a part two because there's just so many other good questions that we didn't even have time to get to. And if this is your first time on this channel, thank you for clicking. Thank you for making it all the way to the end. You're the real MVP. <laughs> we hang out every Monday and Thursday and then there's always additional things like vlogs. So if you want to continue to hang out, go ahead and press subscribe. And we love you so much. Bye. Bye.